Nu går jag med. Nu går jag med. It's coming up to four in the morning, and the holiest shrine of the Sikh faith shimmers like liquid gold in the fading moonlight. Day breaks just round the corner, but before that happens, the Sikh holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib, is being carried from its resting place across the lake of holy water into the inner sanctum, the holiest place within the temple. The holy book is the main focus of the Sikh religion, and where the book is present, it's as the God is present. And after a final thorough washing of the stairs, the book is carried down, placed on a golden palanquin. There's a great deal of jostling of the crowd here, and everybody seems to want to carry it for a while. And considering it's nearly four in the morning, I'm absolutely overwhelmed with the huge crowd. It's said here that only the truest of devotees would attend a ceremony at this time of day, when most people would rather be in their beds. And this is about the only time when the Golden Temple comes close to something like noisy chaos. Otherwise, it's nothing short of an oasis of peace and tranquility in the midst of the bustling city of Amritsar. Amritsar literally means pool of nectar, the holy lake on which the temple stands, framed by gleaming marble courtyards. And echoing all across the holy waters of the lake, the strains of devotional music, pouring out from the inner sanctum. The Sikh faith is expressed through music and music alone. From dawn until nightfall, professional musicians sing verses from the Sikh holy book, in a tradition little known outside of Sikh communities. So now, for the next hour or so, we're going to let ourselves be enveloped by the holy music of the Harmandir Sahib, the Indian name for the Golden Temple of Amritsar. Rangile Jeba The Golden Temple was completed in 1601 
its foundation stone having been laid by the famous Sufi saint Mia Mir of Lahore. There are four entrances to the temple, signifying an open-door policy towards everyone. Free meals are served around the clock and the only restrictions are that one must not drink alcohol, eat meat or smoke in or around the temple. Men and women must also cover their heads to show respect and all who enter must wash their feet in a small pool of water. This has got to be one of the cleanest religious monuments in all of India as there is a constant washing and scrubbing carried out by volunteers who periodically dip hundreds of buckets into the holy water and splash them over the scorching marble day and night. But every activity at the temple takes place against the backdrop of continuous music as the singers evoke the name of God and worshippers file past, dropping coins and sometimes notes in front of the holy book. This is one of the resident musicians, Gurgandi Singh. Nam nit nit 
दिस इज रागी बल देव सिंह मेरे मन नाम नित नित ले आई चांट योर नेम ऑल द टाइम अगेन एंड अगेन द आइडिया ऑफ नाम ओ नेम इज सेंट्रल टू दिस रिलीजन सिखिज्म इज द यंगेस्ट ऑफ मेजर वर्ल्ड रिलीजन जस्ट फाइव हंड्रेड ईयर्स ओल्ड इट वॉज फाउंडेड बाई गुरु नानक हु वॉज बोर्न इन फोर्टीन सिक्सटी नाइन आउटसाइड लाहौर विच फेल इन पाकिस्तान वेन इंडिया वॉज पार्टिशंड Guru Nanak sought to eliminate the caste system of the Hindu religion and the sectarianism of the Muslims. Taking a non-aligned stand, he spread the simple message that we are one, created by the one, and that there is just one truth, the true name. A succession of gurus carried the message down the ages. It's easy to spot a traditional Sikh. The men do not shave or cut their hair and usually wear turbans. Here's Balwan Singh Dillon, professor of religious studies at the Guru Nanak Dev University of Amritsar. Guru Nanak, uh, on the call of God, established the Sikh religion. The basic feature of this religion is the unity of God and the brotherhood of mankind. It wants to eradicate evil, whether it is social, whether it is political, whether it is religious. So it wants to eradicate evil. from all walks of life and wants that we should have a fresh world order based on equality brotherhood love peace and justice i notice that the main worship ritual if you can call it that everything centers around your holy book uh, known as sri guru granth sahib yes. why is the word so important in the sikh religion it seems it is to the book that the uh, devotees are bowing it is the book that is kept in front of the singers and the devotees why why is the written word so important well, yes uh, guru nanak expressed his uh, religious experience in the form of word that is called bani or shabd and uh, guru nanak would say that uh, what i have been directed by god i am ex- expressing it through the bani that what i have been given by the god himself so bani the sikh scripture which we have is considered the most authentic repository of the divine word that have been revealed to the gurus from time to time it uh, was compiled canonized by guru arjan dev in 1604 and later on in 1706 guru gobind singh ji added the hymns of his father guru teg bahadur into it and in 1708 before his demise he conferred the guruship on the sikh scripture that is why today it is called sri guru granth sahib that it is the eternal guru perpetual guru of the sikh community there will be no living guru in the sikh community after that so that is why the sikhs are to take guidance for their temporal and their spiritual guidance from the guru granth sahib that is why they listen to the word the bani which is enshrined in guru granth sahib and take guidance for their day to day matters from the sri guru granth sahib so what are the signs of being a sikh the outward signs uh, first of all i would like to say that sikhism believes in the sahaj marg that you should live a natural life that uh, if you shave your head and beard you will have to do it again but uh, sikhism feel the that you should not interfere in the natural process so that is why we uh, keep here and another thing which is uh, important for us is that it is the identity if i am a sikh i am having a long hair and wearing a turban i need no introduction to anybody that i am sikh and uh, regarding kripan kripan being the ceremonial uh, yeah, sword that uh, a sikh is uh, under obligation to protect the humanity the qurban is not for indulging in vent and bloodshed or killing but a sikh should come forward to protect everybody in need whether he she is a sikh or not so there was an attempt perhaps this attempted equality because i did notice uh, at the golden temple there is absolutely no hierarchy everyone there is no special treatment for anyone i suspect maybe not even the prime minister of oh, india oh, yes. people file yeah. past is yeah. that true the file yes, past yes. exactly every everybody is equal no vips uh, no vips exactly uh, not uh, even the bbc <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> so you are our honorable guests you are welcome 
Uh, but regarding the special treatment in Sikhism, we have no such type of norms. Would you say that was a reaction by uh, Shri Guru Nanak towards the caste system in Hinduism? Yes, it, it, it was a struggle, uh, you can say, uh, by Guru Nanak to eradicate the caste system from India because the caste system was divinely sanctioned at that time and the profession of the people was fixed mm -hmm. according to the caste. So Hinduism was characterized at that time by the caste system. Islam was rather generally identified by its segregation of men and women. Would you say Guru Nanak took both these things on? Because I noticed there is no segregation in the Sikhs, men and women are in the same room. Oh yes, Sikhs believe that uh, women should be given equality in every walk of life. There should be no restriction on their movement in the congregation. When they visit the holy places, there should be uh, no water type to compartments. So if you look into the society of Punjab even today, you will find co-educational schools and uh, women are contributing to the society in various manners. So it could almost, it could be an unconscious effort to integrate everything that is good, not only about Hinduism and Islam, but about every religion. Guru Nanak came with a new dispensation and he invited the people, irrespective of caste or creed, to join it. He called that it is a divine message, divine dispensation, come and join it and be a part of it. It is a divine moment. Thank you.
Music is the only communal worship ritual of the Sikhs. Devotional singers perform in the inner sanctum, the holiest of places within the temple, and they do so in the presence of the Sikh holy book, the Guru Granth Sahib. The singers are known as ragis because they sing pure North Indian rags. The verses they sing come from the Sikh holy book containing some of the best mystical poetry of India, including that of Guru Nanak himself and the various succeeding gurus, as well as the saint mystic Kabir and the Muslim Sufi master Baba Farid. The gurus have specified the various rags that must be used for particular verses and they've also taken into account the time of day or night when a rag is allowed to be sung. Narendra Singh is one of the senior ragis and his duties include taking his daily turn in the temple as well as training younger generations of ragis. It is a full-time job and our duty is to sing the words from the holy book in the way we have been taught, the traditional way, the way the gurus told our ancestors. And we teach the younger ragis to do the same. We have fixed shifts about three hours at a time, sometimes early in the morning. Apart from that, we have riyas, practicing and studying the holy verses. Also, if someone does ask us to their homes to sing Kirtan for their personal devotion, we are allowed to do that, so long as it doesn't interfere with our duties at the temple. And we are all regarded as equal here. Although some musicians are more experienced than others, there is no seniority or demarcation. We all take our turns in the temple equally. So there is no demarcation, but you say there are musicians who are considered more senior now. It's obvious to me that you're among the more experienced, very senior ones, and your style is very purely classical. Um, would you say that the old traditional classical style of Kirtan is now getting diluted? To sing Kirtan in the old traditional classical way requires very strenuous training, which takes a lot of time and the modern generation simply doesn't have the time. These traditional methods were laid down hundreds of years ago by the gurus, not only the original pure rags, but also the composite rags. There were various formulas for mixing the rags. There were very exact prescriptions, and the modern generation don't always have the time or the patience to study these things. And currently there is a modern culture of getting there as fast as possible and you can't get all these traditions correct without the right amount of training. Some of the young ones are bringing in a more modern way of singing and I see these styles changing from month to month, week to week, day to day. And that's fine because the old classical system is timeless. It has lasted for hundreds of years and will last for another thousand or a hundred thousand years. It will be the same forever. This is a very special kind of devotional song, the Gurbani, the word of the Guru. What do you actually feel when you're singing this? Well, the Gurus wrote these words from the depths of their soul, a soul that was feeling separated from its creator. And when the Ragi sings these words, he feels these words himself. He feels the same desire to be at one with the Divine. We feel we want to drown in the music because the music helps us feel the words more intensely. And when I sing Kirtan, I feel my spirit rising, rising up to reunite with the beloved Creator. But 
जिन सही सत्या जिन मन होर मुख होर से कांडे कच्चिया रत्त इश्क खुदाए रत्त इश्क खुदाए रंग दीदार के विसरिया जिनन के होए पार
ਤਿਆਂ ਸੰਤ ਜਨਾਗਰ ਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਵੇ ਦੇਖ ਦਰਸ ਅਕਾਵੇ ਤੋਂ ਸੰਤ ਜਨਾਗਰ ਪ੍ਰੀਤ ਵੇ ਦੇਖ ਦਰਸ ਅਕਾਵੇ ਸ਼ਲੋਕ ਪਵਨ ਗੁਰੂ ਪਾਣੀ ਪਿਤਾ ਮਾਤਾ ਧਰਤ ਮਹਤ ਦਿਵਸ ਰਾਤ ਦੋਏ ਦਾਈ ਦਾਇਆ ਕੇ ਨਾ ਸਰ ਜਗਤ ਚੰਗਿਆਈਆਂ ਬੁਰਿਆਈਆਂ ਵਾਤੇ ਕਰਮਾ ਦੂ ਕਰਮੀ ਆਪੋ ਆਪਣੀ ਕੇ ਨੇੜੇ ਕੇ ਦੂ ਜਿਨੀ ਨਾਮ ਤੇ ਆਇਆ ਗਏ ਮਸ਼ਕਤ ਕਾਲ ਨਾਨਕ ਤੇ ਮੁਖ ਉਗਲੇ ਕਿੱਤੀ ਚੁਣਿਆ ਜਿਨੀ ਨਾਮ ਤੇ ਆਇਆ ਸ਼ਕਤ ਕਾਲ ਨਾਨਕ ਤੇ ਮੁਖ ਉਦਲੇ ਕਿਤੀ ਚੁਕਿਆ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕਾ ਖਾਲਸਾ ਵਾਹਿਗੁਰੂ ਜੀ ਕੀ ਫਤਿਹ ਦੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਰਾਗੀ ਨਰਿੰਦਰ ਸਿੰਘ ਫਿਨਿਸ਼ਿੰਗ ਹਿਸ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਫੋਰ ਦ ਡੇ ਦ ਸਿੰਗਰਸ ਆਰ ਚੇਂਜਡ ਏਵਰੀ 2 ਆਵਰਸ ਔਰ ਸੋ with music covering more or less the entire day from 2:30 in the morning to 10:30 at night the next singer is banta singh and his style in keeping with tradition gives a leading role to the bowed sarinda an ancient predecessor of the sarangi <laughs> ਕੀ ਤੇ 
sanctum of the golden temple but wherever you stand within this complex the sound of ragis is never too far away i've just popped out to admire the temple bathed in the late afternoon sunshine there are loud speakers at every point so that you can move in and out without missing anything perhaps this is the only religion in the world where music and worship are inseparable in this round the clock way here's bhai sikandar singh a musicologist and expert in north indian classical music it's always said that whenever guru nanak was in a trance or a mood he will tell his accompanists to play the rabab and he will say bani aayi hai i have got the revelation and he would sing i don't think i am it's a personal view that guru nanak ever composed poetry he sang poetry always and that was the revelation which linked him with the divine experience and that is the revelation that linked him with music well this is what i'm finding very fascinating about the sikh faith in that the verses are designed not to be read but to be sung the spiritual mystic experience is an emotional experience and the vehicle for emotion is music and poetry so we find both melded together shabad the word the text becomes important because that is the vehicle of thought music is the vehicle of emotion and it has an appeal directly to your inner self arjun dev the fifth guru says uh, i've tried all kind of things i tried yoga i have tried this that that but the ultimate thing is please give me the will and the power to sing your praises for that will redeem me it also struck me as very interesting that the musicians at the golden temple and indeed at every sikh temple in the world are actually known as ragis yeah. meaning exponent 
of rag. Right. So it seems to me that the rag itself is treated I with reverence. What happens is, if the music is proper and good, it absorbs you. The first thing to do is to surrender to the music. This takes you there. Then the Shabad, the word, provides the intellectual content which your rational understands. And they are in sync. And then when the two come together, you get focused on the message. And the message also is pure. How to live a good life, and what a good man is, and all things like that. And that's how your inner transformation takes place, when you withdraw and you rebuild your intellect from subconscious of words, you know. Guru Nanak always sang, whenever he went to any congregation, even of people who were antithetical to him, he first sang and then he answered their questions, but again in musical structure. I, I would say the preaching was done in music, that's what to say. Madhavi. There are compositions which were familiar at that time from the area which is Sindh in Pakistan, the Karhalas, which were the songs of the camel riders. There is quite a bit of element of Punjabi folk, you know. The Guru spoke to people and spoke to their heart and spoke in their language. This is a big thing about them. And if you like, you go to a village and uh, sing an alaniya, and then they'll know what it is. So, Guru Nanak. <laughs> Uh, was born and died yeah. in what is now Pakistan. Yeah. So are Sikhs from India mm. able to visit one of their holiest places? Guru Nanak was born there, Guru Nanak died there. He built the nucleus of religious social society in Kartarpur, which is five kilometers inside the Pakistan border, and we can't go to see that. Not only the Guru Nanak uh, was there, the fifth Guru, which is the pinnacle of martyrdom, the first Sikh great martyr, he lies burnt in Lahore and we are not allowed the right of going and wailing there even. So that's like Christians not yeah. being allowed to Jerusalem or Nazareth, the Muslims not being allowed to Mecca, an Indian Sikh cannot right. go into Pakistan easily. No. And then the seat of Sikh empire, which is today a repository of Sikh heritage, literature, artifacts, architecture, it's Lahore. So we have been, Sikhs as such, have been totally segregated from our roots. The partition was uh, personally 
Was it personally very traumatic for you as well? Uh, fortunately, I was. I belong to East Punjab, so I did not face personal uh, sufferings. But my family, my sisters, and all uh, were married in Lahore. My aunts were in Montgomery, and uh, they came back penniless. India was partitioned in August forty-seven, but as early as October forty-six, forty-seven, rioting had started in West Punjab. Six and Hindus were being killed. Situation was being created that the two parts have to be separated. The society must split, and it became aggressive by February, March, 47. To the extent, thousands of people were massacred and uh, forced to flee their homes. Sixty years down, we are still uh, paying a price for it. Both the countries. Ragi Gurudev Singh and the song Sachi Preet Hum Tum Sang Jodi. I have loved only you. Even if you break away from me, I cannot break away from you. We are as one, as the peacock dances on seeing the descending rain cloud, and as the songbird gazes at the moon. That is the spirit of Sikhism, a longing for reunion, and giving poetic expression. To the pain of separation, separation from their holiest shrines in Pakistan, separation from their fellow Punjabi Sikhs across the border, but most of all, a desire not to be separated from God, God who lives not in mosques or temples, nor in the shrines of India or Pakistan, but in the human heart, that is, the true temple of gold. Oh, 
Sanjama Dharma Nagama Deva 